we're going to talk about the orthogonal projection of vectors. In the previous video, we got a little practice with doing the computations, and I just kind of told you what the equation was that did the projection. In this video, we're going to kind of reason through it and draw some pictures so you can kind of understand where that equation comes from. So the orthogonal projection of vectors, here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to pick an arbitrary vector u and an arbitrary vector y, both from Rn. And here's what I'm going to try to accomplish. I'm going to try to write y as some multiple of u plus kind of like an error vector z. So that is going to be my kind of approximation for y. It's kind of like the, the best approximation for y that I can get by just taking some multiple of u. And this kind of error term is you know, what I have to add on to make this sum equal y. And I'm going to require something very special about this error term. I'm going to require that z is orthogonal to u. So in pictures, what's going on here? I have some vector y. I have some vector u. I'm drawing this in 2D now. But this you know, works in any dimension. It's just that 2D is the easiest one for me to draw. And given that y, I'm going to take some multiple of u. So along the u direction, I'm going to come out alpha along that. So this right here, this blue line, is the vector alpha u, assuming that alpha is you know, smaller than 1. So if that's alpha u, if I need to get to y, I have to add on that amount z, right? When you add vectors, you kind of do the uh, tip to tail and you add on. So this alpha u plus this z does indeed get me to y. So the sum is indeed equal to y, but z is not orthogonal to u. So this kind of fails this requirement check. Let's draw another cartoon. Very similar thing. Maybe my alpha is a little bit bigger. So that would be my alpha u. z needs to be this vector for me to land at y. So again, alpha u plus z that vector sum does give me y, but z is still not perpendicular to u. So this one doesn't work either. You can probably guess what I'm going to do here. If this is my alpha u, if this is my z, that vector sum does indeed land at y. And guess what? This z is orthogonal to u, so this checks that requirement. I've met this sum equaling y, and I've done it in a way such that my error vector is perpendicular to u. So this is exactly what I was looking for. Here's why this is kind of interesting. And here's how we can derive the equation that we used in the previous video. I have that y equals alpha u plus z, right? That's exactly what I'm drawing right here. So if I rearrange that and solve for z, I have that z equals y minus alpha u. That's just normal old algebra. I also have required that z be orthogonal to u. So I know if I dot z with u, I have to get 0. That's exactly what's going on right here. That was my requirement for z. So if I replace z with y minus alpha u, I have this equation right here. Now let's just multiply that out. That's y dotted with u minus alpha times u dotted with u. And look what's going to happen if I move the y dot u to the other side, and then divide by u dot u, I can isolate alpha, and that tells me what alpha needs to be. And that equation should look very familiar. The coefficient that I want to use for u is y dotted with u, and then normalized by the quantity u dot u. So this operation right here that we called a projection last time, that's exactly what this is. We're projecting y along u is a special kind of projection because it gives us an error vector that is orthogonal to my starting vector. So the kind of a best approximation that I'm going to call y hat is this projection operation, and it results in an error that's very special. It results in an orthogonal error. There were other things I could have done, right? I could have you know, said y hat are, is these other values for alpha, but I would have ended up with errors that are not orthogonal. So this is kind of a special kind of best approximation with this special error property. Some books write this as the projection of y along L, where L is the subspace spanned by u. So L isn't u, it's really everything along this direction, all possible you know, multiples of u. 
So that's me projecting y into that subspace spanned by u. Let's do a very specific example. We did an example like this in the previous video, but now we have a little bit more conceptual knowledge of what this projection is. And we can check that our kind of error when we're done is indeed orthogonal. That's my vector y, 3, 4, and my vector u is 5, 3. And I want to find the projection of y onto L, where L is the subspace spanned by U. So think about projecting Y along the direction of U somewhere. If I do this operation, that means I can find kind of like this best approximation plus this error vector Z. So what do I need to do to do this projection? I need to compute the numerator is Y dot U. And that's pretty easy. 3 times 5 plus 4 times 3 is 15 plus 12 is 27. And the denominator, u dot u, is going to be 5 squared plus 3 squared, which gives me 34. So I can write y hat as alpha times u, and alpha is the ratio of these two quantities. So that's going to be 27 over 34 times u. And then if I multiply that out, I get 135 over 34, 81 over 34, so kind of an ugly fraction. But I claim that this is the projection of y onto the subspace spanned by the vector u. If this is y hat, I can now come back to here and solve for z. And I'm going to get y minus y hat, which is this quantity. And then it's kind of ugly fractions, but if I subtract those, I get this error vector right here. And again, kind of the nice thing about this projection is this error vector has to be orthogonal to u. Right? And we can check that. So now I have my y hat, I have my z. Let's come back and check and make sure that this error vector z is indeed orthogonal to y hat. And y hat is in the direction of u. So if it's orthogonal to y hat, it's also orthogonal to u. So really, you could do either dot z with y hat or dot z with u. You're going to get zero. So let's go ahead and dot these two things together. There's my y hat dotted with z. And if I multiply all that out, I'm going to get 135 times a negative 33 is that negative number. And then 81 times 55 is that positive number. And both those are over 34 times 34, which is 34 squared. And guess what happens on the numerator? They perfectly cancel out and I get zero just like I have to because of how I've defined this projection operation. The projection operator gives me basically the best estimate in that subspace and ensures that the error is orthogonal. All right, so that's it for now. We have a better concept of what we mean by a projection. And one of the special properties about this projection is that given my new estimate in that subspace, the error vector is an orthogonal quantity to the approximation y hat and since y hat is in the direction of u, z is also orthogonal to u.